So what I'd like to look at now is I'd like to look at something called partitions. So a partition um, is defined this way. So we'll let A be a set. So A1, A2, so we've got a set within the sets. A1 through AN is a partition of A if it has these qualities, right? So this is very, very like follow the rules kind of thing. Number one, for all I, AI is contained within A. So A1 through AN, all those sets are actually proper subsets of A, okay? For all I, we, AI does not equal the empty set. So none of those sets, A1 through AN, are empty. Three, A1, A2 through AN are pairwise disjoint. What this means is that if I take A1 intersect A2, that's not gonna, e uh, that's gonna equal the empty set. So they don't have any overlapping elements. We actually write that as AI intersect AJ when we have two different sets, they'll equal the empty set. That's my definition of pairwise disjoint. And it basically means that there's no overlap in the sets. So I have no overlapping elements inside of the sets, that's pairwise disjoint. And then A is gonna equal the union of all those sets. So basically what this one is saying, this last one, uh, number four, is it's saying that when I take all the sets together and I bring all their elements together, it has to be the entirety of A. What does this look like? Well, let's say for example, I've got the set, I'm gonna let A equal, okay, red, blue, green, and yellow. So there's my set, okay? So I'm gonna let then A1 is equal to, we'll make it red. A2 is gonna equal blue and green. And A3, we'll let that equal yellow. And we wanna know are A1, A2, a3, this set, a partition of A. Are they? And let's see whether or not they are. We're gonna just follow the rules and see if we get that, uh, if we end up having them all uh, fulfill all the, all the requirements for being a partition. All right. Okay, so we first start out with this first one. For all I, AI is contained in within A. Right, so we look at that and we go, okay, well, A1 is definitely, in fact, it's a proper subset, but it is a subset of A, right? Because red is in A1 and red is also in A. We get A2 is also going to be a subset of A because blue and green, they are also within A. Great, right? So we see subset, right, works out. And then A3 is also a subset of A because yellow is also with an A. So since A3 is the set yellow, and yellow is an A, we can see that A3 is a subset of A. So the first requirement is fulfilled, check. We have got it. Number two, for all I, AI doesn't equal the empty set. Well, we can go through and see that A1 is not empty, A2 is not empty, and A3 is not empty. So check, no empty sets. Then three, we have A2 through AN are pairwise disjoint. Well, let's see. Well, A1 intersect A2, they don't share anything, right? A1 intersect A2 is empty. A1 intersect A3 is also gonna be empty, right? Because A1 has red, A3 has yellow, that's empty. And then A2 intersect A3 is also going to be empty. So all three of them, that's our AIs, are what we call pairwise disjoint. We paired them all up and we saw that their intersection was the empty set. That's great. Basically what that means is, is that there's no overlap. That's gonna be a big thing for partitions. The idea of a partition is, is that if I pull one thing from each set, I'm not gonna get any doubles. I'm not gonna get any of the same element coming from um, uh, the same element coming from two different partitions, right? 
if I do that, I don't have a partition. Okay, basically, I'm going to get some kind of redundancy, which ends up being not clean. And then number four, when I union all of them, right, when I take the union of A1, A2, and A3, does that equal A? Well, A1, union A2, union A3 does equal A because that union is simply red, blue, green, and yellow, which is all of A. Okay? So consequently, I do have a partition here. That fulfills my requirements for the partition, right? I went through, I checked my sets, and I said, oh, yep, 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 yes, 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 yes. One, two, three, and four are all fulfilled. And so what do I have? I have a partition, okay? That gives me like mathematically, I'm like, oh, that's the thing, I've got it. Let's take a look at another set. Let's say for example, now I've got A equals, okay, red, blue, green and yellow, we've got A again, same A. You don't need to rewrite it, I'm just gonna do it again, give myself a clean screen. And I'm gonna have A1 equals red, A2 equals blue, and A3 equals green. And the question is, is A1, A2, A3 a partition? Well, let's take a look. The first requirement, if I go back, I'm gonna scroll up to see the first requirement. The first requirement says for all I, AI is contained with an A. Well, each one of these um, are, is a subset of um, A. So the answer to this is yes. Okay, that totally works, that's true. Number two, okay, we go in, we say, all right, for all I, AI does not equal the empty set. Well, no empty sets here, so the answer is yes, right? They're all, they all have something in them, so yes. In number three, we see that each pair are pair, piecewise, pairwise disjoint. Well, that's true. Red intersect blue is empty set. Red intersect green empty. Blue intersect green is empty. Three, that gives me yes, okay? Now four though, if I look at four, I need the union of all the sets is gonna give me all of A. Well, that doesn't work because we're actually missing yellow. You see that when we union A1 through A3, that does not equal A. So A1, union A2, union A3 does not equal A. So no, and so A1, A2, and A3 are not a partition of A. Basically, they're missing something from the set, and so we can't actually retrieve everything from the set. We've, we've got uh, something that's kind of missing from the entirety of the set. Let's take a look at one more example. In this example, we'll use some set builder notation with some infinite sets. Let's suppose that our A is gonna equal R, and so we'll have A1 equal the set of all X belonging to R such that x is less than negative two. Then we'll have a two, we'll have that equal the set of all x belonging to r such that x is greater than negative two. Okay? So is a one, um, a two, a partition of a? or a partition of R in this case. If we think about it from our perspective, we can start with one, all right? One, is it the case that um, each, that this set is a subset of R? So A1 is a subset of R, A2 is a subset of R. So our first requirement, right, that subset requirement is fulfilled, so that's a yes. Two, okay, we're required that um, our no empty sets requirement. Well, that's definitely true. Neither one of these is empty. So yes, that's true. Three, okay. Well, our A1 intersect A2 pairwise disjoint? And the answer to that is yes as well. But then for 
is A1 union A2 equal to R? And the answer is no, because negative two is not in A1 union A2, but it is in R. So consequently, A1, A2 is not a partition of R. This idea of a partition is going to end up being very handy, right? Constructing a partition actually gives us some things that are very, very clean, right? We've got pairwise disjointness, meaning that I'm never going to overlap. If I pull one from each part, each uh, subset of the partition, I'm good to go. I know that I'm going to never get uh, a repeat. The subset requirement tells me that um, what I'm going to do when I pull everything from any one of those sets or all of the sets, I'm going to actually end up with something that's actually in A. So I know what elements that I'm going to get. And then my third requirement, okay, that is, is that there are no empty sets means that if I pull something from the partition, I'm going to get something. That's actually kind of important. And then the fourth requirement, this union, right, okay, tells me that I can pick um, every element of A from the partition. It means that there's nothing that's actually in A that's missing from at least from one and only one of the partitions, right? So like that whole uniqueness and existence is what we call that. It's got an existence. Every element exists within the partition, all right? So we got four requirements, four requirements for partitions. Subsets, they have to be subsets. There are no empty sets. We have pairwise disjointness, and then the union gives us the entirety of the set. And that completes the lecture.